Hi friends, I'm excited to share a new layout I made for the Vicki Booten design team. I have a ch new challenge up in the Vicki Booten creative community this morning, and the challenge is to create a layout using tone on tone uh, layering and embellishing. So I'm going to be creating a layout that for me, I'm going to have like columns of color. So four different, four different main colors that I'm using on the layout. And to start, I am taking distress inks. So I do have the full size ink pads of the inks and oxides, but for this, I wanted to use these small little <laughs> travel, uh, distress inks because I like the stripes that they add. So I took the distress inks in these little tiny squares and just dragged them down my page. And then I am going to end up adding a little bit of water to lift some of the color. So I'm going to just spray on water with my water bottle and then use a paper towel to dry it up. The colors that I used are seedless preserves is the purple carved pumpkin is the orange salty ocean mixed with a little speckled egg is the blue and then the yellow is fossilized amber so i did you can see i added water a couple of times to lift some of that color and then i am going to use all of those papers that i showed right at the beginning of the video i cut them into strips of paper the back like the largest piece of paper is two and a half inches by seven inches so each of those, the main patterned paper that I used, each of those pieces is two and a half by seven inches. And then the other colors that I used, some from the mixed media pad, like the pre-made mixed media backgrounds, I cut little um, strips of papers from those and then also some of the other patterned papers. And those are just smaller sizes. So none of them are the same. I kind of eyeballed it and just made sure that they were smaller than the two and a half by seven. So some of them are like one inch wide, some of them are one and a half inches wide and smaller. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to layer them. Oh, and then I cut, sorry, I also cut those little tags. I'm only going to end up using the yellow one that says enjoying on the layout, but I also cut that blue one. So I will use that for another layout. And then here what I'm doing, I did distress the edges of each strip of paper and then I'm going to be layering those on top of each other. So already you can see tone on tone just means you're using the same color on top of each other. And so here you can see my mixed media is the same shades or, or are the same shades as all of the patterned papers. So I did the distress ink in the background is the same color family, not exactly the same colors, but same color family as the patterned papers that are going to go on top of it. And then all of the embellishing that I'm going to be doing on the layout is also the same color. So here, this little tag, I did want it to look like a tag. I wanted it to have, you know, the um, clipped corners. So one little trick I have for that, sometimes it's hard to cut those corners at the same angle. So what I usually just do is cut the first one, kind of eyeball it and cut the first one. And then I take the piece that I cut off and um, line it up corner to corner on the other side and use it to trace, like to trim the other corner off. Hopefully that makes sense. So I just flip it over and match the corners and then cut it. Okay, and so then the next day, that's all I had time for that night. <laughs> so the next day I took Distress Oxides and I used similar colors. Some of the colors I use a little bit darker shade, um, but like Seedless Preserves, this purple, it's Seedless Preserve. I used the Distress Ink the day before and then I added Distress Oxide on top of it. People say you're not supposed to mix Distress, the your inks and oxides. And I for sure would say that that's true. Like if you stamp, uh, if you use a stamp and you put it on your ink and then you say take the same stamp and put it on your oxide it's going to mess up your ink pad so you shouldn't mix them like using the same tool but in this way that i've done it like where i put the distress ink down and then i'm using a paintbrush to add oxide and i'm not mixing those on my actual ink pad you can see i'm you know pushing pressing the color down onto my craft uh mat so the inks aren't actually touching each other on the ink pads it's there's no problem with it so when you actually put it on the layout, I actually kind of like how it looks when you've used both of those things together. So that's just one little thing. You know, every rule that they make is meant to be broken so or bent, not broken, bent. Um, so for, for me, I have no, no issue with mixing the inks and oxides actually on my layout, but definitely would not recommend having anything touch both of the ink pads.
like the ink and the oxide pad because it will it will mess up your ink pad okay so for the orange the purple with seedless preserves the orange i used a darker shade of oxide i used a uh, crackling campfire just because i wanted some variation in color there on the blue i had originally used salty ocean for that background mostly salty ocean for the background and it was a little bit more turquoise like a brighter blue than the pattern papers it does have that kind of that shade in there but i added in for the oxides i used chip sapphire so it kind of helped the navy match a little bit better and then uh, again for the yellow fossilized amber for both the ink and the oxide and so i did just some splatters and some big dots of color and then kind of dried it up with my paper towel and then I took three photos I have three square photos I'm trying to remember what the measurements are on those I think they're two and three fourths by two and three fourths I'm pretty sure that's what they were so just under three inches and I backed them in white first because I wanted them to have a border if you take a black and white photo, any photo really, and put it on top of all of this color, it might get lost if it doesn't have a solid border, kind of breaking up the color from the actual photo. And I did print the photos in black and white. Again, I'm, I'm here in my black and white photo phase. Um, and the colors that we were wearing didn't, didn't match. So, and they didn't match the pattern paper and they didn't match each other. So I wanted to I liked how they looked better in black and white. And then here, what I've done is I've taken out some of the ephemera. And I kind of did a, some of that off camera. Where I went through and pulled out some little things. And I'm going to have a butterfly in each color block. So that purple butterfly, I actually cut that from patterned paper in the collection. This is the Discover and Create collection. I don't even know if I mentioned that. So sorry. It's, I'm using Vicki Booten's Discover and Create collection. So the purple was cut from pattern paper. The orange and blue butterflies are both from one of the ephemera sets. And then the yellow butterfly was also from pattern paper. And then here I'm using the stickers from one the sticker book in the collection. And I'm kind of using those to layer behind. Right now I'm just working on that, that stripe of orange. <laughs> so I'm pulling out a bunch of different orange embellish embellishments ephemera stickers puffy stickers all different kinds of little bits and pieces and I'm layering those up putting craft foam in between the layers because I love dimension so by adding the craft foam behind some of the little bits and pieces it helps to Kind of give a variation to your eye when you're looking at it and that's a teeny tiny little pencil <laughs> you can hardly see it on the fin finish layout i can see it because i know i did it but it's it's not a it's a very little teeny tiny sticker and then i layered on one of the button looking circles from the ephemera and then a little puffy heart and then it's time for the purple section so I'm using another little phrase. So the orange phrase says good days ahead. And then this purple one that I'm adding right now says life right now. And I did distress the edges of each of these little, these little um, phrase manners. And I will say one thing, if you're kind of doing stripes of color like this and you're doing tone on tone embellishing, you don't want to go straight across the page with the same type of embellishment so for example on those phrase banners I use um, three different colors of those but I have them like it in varying places on the page so the orange is not right next to the purple phrase um, and then the blue you can see I'm doing up above the photo right here so it doesn't give a super linear look if I were to line those up it would be very linear and it would probably distract attention away from my photos so by adding it just as a layering piece and kind of varying where you put different embellishments of the same kind, it does help your eye to move around the page and to not get stuck, you know, on one, one little detail. 
And then here, what am I doing? I'm adding these. This is just a little sticker, like a little tab sticker. And I'm going to add, I will go back and add some writing to all of the little pieces that I added. <clears throat> and I'm distressing the edges of a lot of, not everything, but a lot of the things that I put on it, distress the edges of. Added another little button. It's kind of hard to see <laughs> because it is tone on tone. It is kind of hard to see on the video. I know. And then that's another little sticker. It has some gold foiling, little heart uh, with gold foiling. And then the tag that said enjoying, you can see here, I'm pulling it up. So I realized after I had glued everything down, I realized, oh my gosh, like you can't see the word. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Um, when I was planning out the layout, or like kind of laying the layout out, you could see the word enjoying. And then for some reason, when I glued my photos down, I put it on top of it. So no problem. I just tore it off and <laughs> moved it up. And then I ended up, I did rip it a little bit, but also not a huge deal because I'm able to cover it up with a little phrase or like with a little sticker. So here, I'll, I'll do that in just a second. But I did rip it like right there in the middle. Luckily, it is layered behind, but I'm going to use that little journal block to cover up the tear. And you'll never know, unless you're watching this video, <laughs> you would never know that I totally messed that up. And then that little yellow phrase says things to remember. It was from a larger embellishment. There were not a lot of yellow embellishments in the ephemera set, or I actually think there were a bunch of yellow, but I had already used them. So I didn't have a lot of yellow ephemera left. So I ended up cutting that little phrase from one of the other pieces that wouldn't have really fit on the page. I just cut out the words and added that. And then I'm going to be adding a little floral cluster. And if you have the collection and you have the sticker book, I love the sticker book in this collection. And I know I've said that in a past video. It's been a while, but the sticker book in this collection is done by color. So the first page has a lot of colors on it, like that first page of stickers. But then as you flip through the sticker book, each page is done by color, which I absolutely love. It makes it super easy, especially when you're wanting to do a tone on tone layout. It makes it super easy to find the pieces that you want in the colors that you like. So I applaud American Crafts on that one. That was brilliant. Or Vicki Booten. I don't know who, I don't know who did that, but amazing. It made it really easy to work with. And then off camera, I did do some journaling. So the photos on this layout are of, um, I'm still working my way through our Greece trip. So on this particular layout, we were at Syntagma Square and we were watching the changing of the guards, which was super cool. It was a very hot day. Um, I do remember that. My kids were like sweating to death, but we were there. We were in it to win it. We wanted to see the changing of the guards and they thought it was very, very cool. So on one of the little uh, tabs, I did say it was hot. And then on the blue little tab that I had added, I wrote really cool. And then I have my journaling on that yellow enjoying tag. And I added some yellow thread. And now I'm adding pops of color in coordinating colors. So you can see everything I did, I did in the color family that it's resting on. So that's the challenge up in the Vicki Booten creative community today, just to create a layout where you use tone on tone. That's it. It can do, you could do it lots of different ways. And I have actually done that with several layouts in this collection that I've posted in the, in the creative community. So you could check those out as well. Here are some close-ups. If you have any questions for me, please uh, pop them down in the comments. Thank you to all of my new subscribers and to all of my loyal watchers of my videos. I very much appreciate you guys. And I hope you have an awesome day. Bye for now.